Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com. And in today's video, we're going to quickly talk about the consequences for not responding to a civil case against you. It could either be from a debt collector. It could be a civil case from the original creditor. And I'm here to tell you that it's very important that you respond to the court summons because the number one consequence that you will suffer if you don't respond to the court summons is that they're going to get a, a default judgment against you. And you're going to feel like the like you have two entities against you. You're going to, have to feel like the court is against you and you're going to feel like the plaintiff is against you. And the reason why you're going to have that feeling is because when you go in there to file your documents or you're going to go in there and you're going to file your motions, you want to file your set aside, not to say that you shouldn't execute your rights to be able to have the case reopened if it hasn't passed a certain period of time. But what's going to happen is that you're going to be questioned at every step. Why didn't you respond to the default judgment? Why didn't you uh, simply notify the court clerk or notify the plaintiff? Why didn't you do anything about it when you had the opportunity to do about it? And then every excuse that you use, like I didn't know or I was fearful, all of that stuff, they're going to just disregard it. They're going to be like, it's going to, you're going to feel like somebody, like you got two people against you, a judge and someone that's suing you. And that's what people have reported to me that they experienced, and they asked me why. And that's actually what happened to me during my situation where I was like, I, I didn't know on some of them. I made it to most of them, but there were some that I didn't make it to. And uh, I was like, it seems like the, the court is against me also. And that's because we have a responsibility, and this is me just being me. You know, uh, some stuff I can lay it out there easy for you to 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 uh, to absorb. But on this one, this is one where I've made the mistake, and possibly you've made the mistakes in the past. And if you haven't made the mistake, I'm gonna tell you don't make this mistake. If you have a court summons from an original creditor or debt collector, you need to at a minimum, at a minimum write a response to that court summons. Now, if you want to get into more detail about how you could perhaps win your case, we have services for that. But the purpose of this video is just to notify you that there are consequences if you don't respond to that court summons. And the first one, first one is that you're going to feel like the court is against you. And it's because you disregarded the court summons. That is not just from the plaintiff. That's from the court for you to respond. They have brought you or us when they're when we're getting sued into a legal arena where we have to answer. The courts are not just set up just to be like a place to just file some documents and have people disregard them. There's going to be some consequences. And for civil cases, the consequence for not responding to a civil court summons is going to be a default judgment. Now, let's go into more consequences that could happen. And I was just on a, on a phone call uh, speaking to an individual who has a court case that is about to run out of time on responding with the court summons, responding to the, to the uh, summons or the complaint in some areas. And he had asked me, what can they do? Well, let me tell you what they could do once they have that default judgment. Depending on your state, they can garnish your wages and they can garnish 25% up to 25% per pay period. So imagine this, whatever amount your check is, imagine if you have a garnishment for 25% of your money that is coming in per pay period. How would you be feeling if that happened? I can tell you, I can tell you that the people who contact us at our office, they don't feel too good about that. Because they're already struggling to make ends meet and then all of a sudden there's going to be a garnishment. And the crazy thing about it is that they don't care about the other stuff that you have to pay. So it could be like a domino effect that can happen to you. Now, you might be saying to, your, to, to yourself or saying, hey, Steve, I don't live in a state that garnishes, 
that they have wage garnishment. There's four states that do not allow wage garnishments. But you want to know what they do allow and what I've seen and have people put post comments here on YouTube and post comments in our live chat is that they froze their bank accounts or they just garnish their bank accounts. A garnishment is where they just take all the money out of your bank account. Freezing the bank account is something that they'll do while, they're, while it's pending uh, some other document from the court. Now, one of the reasons why they could do a freeze on there, so let me walk you down exactly the reasons why they would put a freeze on the account and why it makes sense to them to do that even though they can't get the money right at that time is because what this is what they do. They're not just doing this stuff willy-nilly, so to speak. They're actually plotting and planning the right time to get the money out of your account. They're sitting there looking at your credit reports. They're sitting there looking at all the data that you've ever filled out on any applications. Anything that they have, they utilize that information, including the information on your credit report showing how you're paying your bills to determine, number one, if you potentially have money. And it's not talking about having a lot of money. It's just that you have money coming in. And then the other thing is how you're paying your, your bills is they're looking at to determine when would be the time to strike to get that garnishment in there to get the money. Because if you're getting paid every two weeks, they're going to put that in there right before that Friday or Thursday's pay period. They're going to take that writ of garnishment there and they're going to take that money out of your account. So they, this is the things that, that these are the consequences. So if you disregard the court summons and they can either garnish your wages or they can garnish your bank account. And now here's another thing that people don't know about. And this is not widely known. And I think that it's not widely known because people, there are not really too many people out here helping people with this. And when because we help a lot of people, we hear all the different scenarios. And I'm pretty sure that there's some more to come. But let me tell you a scenario that is not widely known. If you have a bank account, let's just say that you have a credit card with, let's just say with uh, Bank of America. And this is not to say Bank of America did it, but you know what I'm saying. Let's just say you have a bank account, a, a credit card with Bank of America. And Bank of America is one of the original creditors that will hire an attorney to sue you in your area. So they will hire an attorney to sue you in your area to collect for that credit card debt. Now, something that has happened to people is that when they're being sued by a credit card company and they're also banking at that same bank, so Bank of America also also has credit cards. Citibank also, I mean, Bank of America also has credit cards and a bank. Citibank also has uh, uh, credit cards and a bank. Chase also has credit cards and a bank. And a lot of people will have the credit card and they'll also bank at the bank. This is how bank accounts get frozen. And think about it. They know what you put in there. I've had people tell me before, they were like, oh, I don't have anything to worry about. I don't even care if they get the garnishment. They, what, they, what, what some people do, and I understand, I understand that some people use us as a sounding board where they just want to throw everything at us so we can tell them the worst that could happen. And then when they understand the worst that could happen, they come to their own rationalization on if they want to do something about it or not do something about it because they know the worst that could happen. Well, one of the worst things that can happen that some people seem to not believe, and I try to stress this in my videos, and I'm going to start talking about it even more, is that if you share a credit card with the same bank that you bank at, you can wake up in the morning and your account will be frozen. You will not have access to your money. And what are you going to say? What are you, what are you going to say to them? And what people end up doing is, yes, they end up changing their de direct deposit and getting another bank account. But think about it this way. These companies are not stupid. That's what I want to get across to people is that there are consequences with not uh, 
following through with a uh, civil court summons with a def and you'll end up getting a default judgment and then these are the repercussions that could happen the consequences that can happen is wage garnishment garnishment of your bank account or freezing your bank account and i just walked down exactly the reasons why and a logical step-by-step -step reasons why that can happen and how they get to that outcome so there's a lot of stuff that you could do other things that you need to watch out for and I've seen this happen too with disregarding a court uh, summons and they got a default judgment is that husband and wife get married I, I I have two people that are clients right now just got married just got married and one of them had a judgment on their credit reports and guess what they wanted to go do wanted to go buy a house and they said what about that judgment see and i know how we could be we could like you know if we don't see it it doesn't exist we put it in the back of our mind and i know that this stuff could be hard because i went through it myself but these things like this you can't just leave them out there lingering if you're a single person and yeah, you know, you don't, you don't, you're not going to get married. You're not going to go and buy a house. You're not going to go get anything major. Yeah, you can get by buying a car. Yeah, you can get by renting, you know, in some places, some places might not allow you to, to rent with your credit, having that stuff on there. But you, you know what I'm saying is, but if you are trying to build a, a, a life for yourself, you got to be ahead of it. You got to be ahead of it. That's a lesson that I learned the hard way is that you just got to be ahead of it. And some stuff you're going to have to make a de determination on what route you're going to have to take. And some of the times the route isn't going to take, even if you were able to get it reopened and set aside, it would just be to go ahead and settle it and not have the judgment against you. Because you need to be able to move forward in your life. It could depend on where you're at in your life. And so some of the times it might be, well, I'm going to have it reopened and I'm going to fight it all the way to the end because you know that there's problems with their documents. See, there, there's no, this is the thing is that there's no right or wrong. And I, and I feel you, I understand you. And I, I'm, I'm, I've been in your shoes is that you, you want to know like the, you want to know everything that's above the water. If you can env envision that you're in a, in a, a, a ocean, you're in an ocean of water and you, you stick your head out of the water and you can see what you can see. The summons is what you can see. The amount on the summons is what you can see. The, the, the text and the, and what they're alleging against you and the documents they give you is what you can see. But what you don't see is that if you don't resolve this, it, that it's going to follow you for up to 20 years. What you don't see is that if they're trying to garnish your wages or trying to do things to take your income, that makes it harder for you and the family. That makes it harder to put food on the table. That makes it harder for you to pay the car note, harder for the insurance. It's giving money to something that you could have resolved in another way. Because when they're doing it, they're going to come at it and they're going to want to get it their way. They're not going to want to get it your way they're not going to want you to give it your way they're going to want to get it their way and then that's going to put a lot of pressure on you people say that they can't sleep i remember when i was going through it you can't sleep you're arguing with your spouse uh kids are acting up all of this is just from you not being you and what's making you not be you is because you got this stress over you with court summons with with you know this case and if you disregarded it you know it even made the stress level even go higher even though things might calm down this is this is the this is how it goes you get the, the default judgment stuff calms down but you know in the back of your mind that you're going to want to do something in the future and it's going to come back to get you it's going to come back to bite you hard that's what happened to me that's what happened to a lot of people when you the, the, this this type of stuff when you don't get ahead of it it comes back to get you when you didn't want it to come back it seems like it hides when you don't want to do nothing when you're not trying to go for that job promotion or that job that's going to check your credit the job that that maybe they don't even care about your credit score per se, but they're looking at your credit to see how you live your life. 
you're you're going for a job to be the financial in the financial department of a company maybe you're going to a job to be in the cash office for tj maxx i remember when i when i was in high school me and my best friend david we were we got trusted to do the cash to, to, to add up all the registers at night I'm, I'm a teenager but i know that that job now it they're not giving a teenager that job this was way back in the 1980s now there are adults that have that job and the way things are now with social media them checking the social media the way that credit is more prevalent now than it was back then and the way that data is used now different than back then data you could say that data you can look at a credit report you can look at a person's personal a this is what they call a title search on your name so you can look at a title search on the individual's name and i don't care you can try to lock up your lexus nexus and all of that stuff and th th the people will still get it as long as they're not trying to approve you for some sort of credit, you will have a background check on your name. And it's going to reveal all of that stuff. And it might reveal even more things that you don't even know about, things that we don't even know about, not saying bad things, but ways, some data about the way that we uh, pay our bills. It could even have the dates in there. Like this is, we live in a world where data is everything. It's all around us. You don't have to take my word on it. It's all around us. So data actually tells a story about a person. And by having that data readily available, it's like that's going to do all the speaking for you. And you just don't want to get caught in that position. So if you have a debt collection lawsuit or even a lawsuit from an original creditor, go to my website thecreditrepairshop.com, in the live chat, tell us what's going on. Tell us what your overall goal is. Do you want to fight it? You have to respond, but you might choose not to continue fighting, and you might choose to move towards a settlement sooner. Or if you want to just fight it and then look at a settlement if you end up losing, tell us that. But also upload the summons because if you choose to use our services, which our services will include a response to their allegations against you, and there's a, a you, we have a unique way of responding to their allegations, and then we have a unique way of putting together an affirmative defense that will at least give them some things to think about and know that it's not going to be you laying on some railroad tracks and them just rolling right over you to get a judgment. So the link, go to my website, link is below, thecreditrepairshop.com, go to the live chat, upload them there, and get, tell us a little bit about what's going on. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different, so you can see my eight-point validation process and my two-phase settlement process if you need your credit reports and scores go to the website your the number three scores.com to grab your transunion equifax and experian credit credit reports and all three scores if you have debt collectors coming after you early you could get ahead of something like this happening where you have consequences from not responding to a debt collector court summons grab my three pack of letters statute of limitations letter debt validation letter and cease and desist collection activities letter the instructions are right there so you'll use the one that's appropriate for your specific situation please like this video please share this video when you do that you help other people i help you you help me help other people you help other people by liking and sharing this video thank you for your time post your questions and comments this is stephen a williams president and founder of the credit repair shop.com